Okay, so now that we've got the desired gene, and we've now copied it, so we've got lots and lots of it, we've got it in a high quantity, we now need to try and insert it into a host cell. Okay, so this is stage three. Now there are three different strategies that we're gonna look at for how you can insert a gene into a host cell. One, using a plasmid vector. Two, using something called Agrobacterium tumefaciens to insert it into plant cells specifically, or using microprojectiles to insert DNA into plant cells. Okay, so a vector in genetic engineering is like a go-between, okay? It is something that is used to transfer the gene from one organism into another. It's the carrier, it's the messenger, as you, as you, if you like, okay? Uh, so it takes it into the host. Now, one type of vector that is used a lot is a plasmid. Now, you should all be familiar with plasmids from when we studied prokaryotic cells, but they're these small loops of double-stranded DNA found in, uh, in bacterial cells and they replicate independently of the main DNA and they're very easy to isolate and manipulate because of how small they are and simple they are. So to get the plasmids, the bacteria are first treated with enzymes to break down their cell walls and then they are centrifuged to separate the large bacterial chromosomes from the small plasmids. Then the plasmid is cut with restriction enzymes. Now, it's the same restriction enzymes that are used to isolate the gene in the first place, is where we talked about it uh, previously, and that means that they have sticky ends and that they are complementary to each other. Then you can use DNA ligase enzymes to link together the DNA molecule that was isolated and the plasmid, and this is now known as recombinant DNA. But we've got to be careful here because some cleaved plasmids, when they're open with the restriction endonucleases, actually just seal up again without incorporating the desired gene. So this doesn't happen 100% of the time. Okay? Plasmids are not the only type of vector. You can also use viruses or things called liposomes. Um, these are discussed uh, further in my video on a gene therapy. So the next step would be to get the bacteria to take up these recombinant uh, plasmids. Okay, and to do that, you put them in a solution containing lots of calcium ions. Okay, then you cool them to near zero degrees and quickly then heat shock them. And if you do that, then they should take up hopefully the plasmids back into the, into the cells. Only about 1% take up the plasmid with the gene uh, and are said to be transformed, but that can be enough. Now, you need to actually identify the bacteria in the sample that have been transformed. This is the problem. If you put uh, thousands of bacteria in that solution with the calcium ions and only 1% have taken up the recombinant DNA, we need to make sure we isolate those ones now and get rid of the other ones, okay? Because then we want to mass produce those bacteria that have been transformed. Now, when you insert the transgene, what you can do is you could do it along with a marker gene attached to it, something that we can use to identify if it is in the cell or not. Okay, it could be a bacterial resistance gene, or it could be a fluorescent marker gene, such as green fluorescent protein, or GFP. Then you can grow them on an agar plate, and if you grew them, if, if it was the um, resistance gene that you inserted, you could grow them on a plate with antibiotics, which you knew would kill off the ones that didn't have the resistance gene, and hence the gene that, that was also transferred along it. Uh, but actually, probably the easiest way is to use the, the GFP fluorescent marker, because all you then have to do is shine a light um, a UV light on the on the dish and you get all the ones that have got the um, the gene that you transferred plus the marker gene, the GFP with it, uh, will, will light up really nicely and then you can just remove them and those are the ones that you can clone over and over again. An example of this that you may have heard about is the production of human insulin. The gene is extracted from beta cells in the pancreas, a plasmid is taken and they are cut with restriction enzymes. They both have complementary sticky ends. Um, they are combined, and then the transformed DNA gets uh, isolated. Then they can be mass produced. They can be put in an industrial fermenter. The insulin can be extracted and purified and used to treat diabetics. So it's an amazing example of how genetic engineering could be used to help, uh, can be used to help people. Now, the second method of gene insertion is to use an organism called Agrobacterium tumefaciens, which is a very ubiquitous uh, bacterial pathogen known for causing a particular disease called crown gall disease in dicotyledonous plants. It uses its pili to infect root cells with something called the TI plasmid, which carries uh, genes that will cause the target plant to grow a tumor, which is called a gall, hence the crown gall disease. 
Now what we can do is we can engineer this TI plasmid. We can stick in some genes that we want the uh, bacteria to transfer into the plant. Okay, so it's a bit sneaky here. This, we're gonna make the most of this bacteria and how this bacteria infects this plant by sort of hijacking uh, the TI plasmid with a few genes that we're interested in um, transferring across. Now a great example of how this is used is the golden rice and golden rice 2 examples. And this is there is a very high instance of vitamin A deficiency in some of the poorer countries around the world. Now this can lead to blindness and an awful immune de uh, deficiency syndrome that can lead to death. Thousands and thousands and thousands of children are dying of this every year. Now vitamin A is commonly found in sort of animal products like eggs, milk and cheese and it's also made in our bodies from carotene which you can get from the orange pigment, the beta car uh, carotenoids that is found in carrots. But rice is really the major uh, part of these people's diets and they don't really get access to animal products like this, they're expensive and uh, also the rice that they eat, although you can get some carotene out of one part of it, it's not the part that is, is it eaten. The endosperm is the bit that uh, people eat and that bit does not contain any carotene. So, in order to solve this problem, in the 1990s, scientists started to try and produce a variety of rice with carotene in the endosperm. Genes were initially taken from daffodils and soil bacterium and inserted into rice. It was then found that if you actually substitute these daffodil genes with ones from maize, you can get a really, an even better concentration of carotene than they originally were getting. This rice was called golden rice uh, because when you introduce the carotene, it uh, started producing that kind of orange pigment similar to carrots, and that's why the rice went this kind of nice golden color. But it worked. This rice uh, can give you carotene if you eat it, and therefore you can uh, get your vitamin A levels up. And it was um, introduced into the plants using uh, Agrobacterium tumefaciens. So it's an example of how Agrobacterium tumefaciens is used to introduce these genes. So the genes were isolated, they were put on the TI plasmid, then Agrobacterium tumefaciens was put in a petri dish with some rice embryos and it introduced these genes into the rice embryos and then the, the plants were grown. Now what you can do then is also interbreed those plants with the sort of native varieties of rice that grow in the various different countries where this is a problem. And so they can still have the, the type of rice and the flavor of rice, but now with these genes spread into it as well. Now golden rice is controversial as people say that it's not really the right solution to the problem. All these people are very, very uh, poor, poor countries. And actually just by giving them some better rice is not solving the, the, is the main issue here, which is the, the actual poverty. Now, uh, scientists continued to develop golden rice and actually made a new variety called golden rice 2, which only requires two enzymes to be inserted, phytoene synthase and uh, phytoene desaturase. And this form, they found, had an even higher quantity of carotene, so it was even better than the, than the first type of golden rice that they did. So we've had using um, vectors like plasmids, uh, we've had uh, agrobacterium tumefaciens, and the third way to insert a gene is to use things called microprojectiles. Now this is when foreign genes are to be transferred are coated onto the surface of minute gold or tungsten particles. It's an amazing thing, they're coated onto these particles and then they are bombarded onto the target tissue or cells using something called a gene gun, believe it or not. So you fire this little gun and it fires these tiny little particles of gold with the genes coated on them. It's what, uh, the, this whole sort of uh, area of science is called biolistics and the gene that can be incorporated into the, into the cells that way. Okay, so to go back to the genetic uh, engineering overview, you've found, we've identified the required genes initially and isolated them then made multiple copies of it using PCR, and then insert it into the vector. And then once you have done that, you just then need to multiply the organism that has it in.